Good day everyone. I am Attorney Lavelia Femadelo Tatler, your professor for this course. Today we will have an introduction of the subject and also the preliminaries under obligations and contracts. For our course description, this course emphasizes the various concepts in obligations and contracts and it is designed to introduce students enrolled in business courses the basic principles of obligations and contracts. Particularly, we will be discussing sources, elements, forms, proper ways of interpreting and understanding them, and how to spot problematic contracts and how to remedy or reform them. At the end of this course, you are expected to define the important concepts in obligations and contracts through a series of lectures, quizzes, and group activities. You must also understand the concepts and principles of law and the current trends in the field by reading cases pertinent thereto. And lastly, you must be able to analyze and rule over legal problems during periodical examinations. Speaking of which, there will be three major examinations for this subject that would be prelim, midterm, and finals. 30% of your grade will come from your formative assessment or class participation which will primarily cover your quizzes and 70% will be your final assessment which will be your prelim exam, midterm exam, and pre-final exam. This time, I will be discussing to you the course policies for this subject. If we are going to have a face-to-face -face class or synchronous classes, attendance will be called at the start of the class and those who are late will be considered absent. Whenever we are going to have synchronous classes, students must turn on their cameras during the entire duration of the class. Students will be called at random for recitation. Any student who is absent or offline at the time he or she is called will get a grade of 60 for that recitation. The same rule will apply for quizzes and any other class activities. Any form of cheating will be dealt with severely. And lastly, there will be no prescribed textbook for this class. But students must have a copy of the codal provisions and other related laws which may be directed in the course outline. You must remember that during our orientation, I encourage all of you to photocopy the book of Hector de Leon under Obligations and Contracts. I would greatly appreciate it if you will have your own copy of the book. This is our course outline and of course we will start with the introduction to law which will be our lesson for today. Then we will proceed to the general provisions and obligation, nature and effects of obligations, different kinds of obligations, extinguishment of obligations, general provisions on contract, essential requisites of a contract, forms of contract, reformation of instruments, interpretation of contracts, resistible contracts, voidable contracts, unenforceable contracts, and void or inexistent contracts. This time, we will have your introduction to law and business law. We will first define law and business law and the different sources of law. Let us first discuss law. Can you imagine what your life would be without law? What does law do in our lives? Or what is our duty as members of the society? Are we expected to follow the law? Or are we expected to break them? Let us first start with the definition of the word law. According to Sanchez Roman, a Spanish civilist, he defined law as the rule of conduct, just and obligatory, promulgated by legitimate authority, for the common observance and benefit. Perhaps you might ask, what is the definition of conduct? What is just? And what is obligatory? These three words are our keywords when it comes to the definition of law. Kung sabi saya pa, conduct is ang tamang paglihok, just, sakto, and obligatory. Meaning, kitang tanan expected nga mo follow sa Law. Of course, it is promulgated by legitimate authority. Nga nung kinahanglan man ta mulihok o tama. O nga nung naman ta obligasyon, sundun ang law. Because it is for the common observance and benefit of everyone. Now, what are the different kinds of law? We have the divine law, the natural law, moral law, physical law, or state law. So, in this subject, 
what law are we going to follow? But before we answer that, let us first define these different kinds of law. Let us first start with the divine law. From the word itself, divine. So it is the law of religion and faith. It concerns itself with the concept of sin. And, of course, it is promulgated by God. So, when we talk about divine law, ang atong ginaiskutan ani ang inyong religion o pagtuo sa divine living. So, all of us have different gods and we call them by different names. But when it comes to punishment, unsa man ang atong kadlukan sa divine law, when we do something, there will be a punishment. And the concept of doing bad things is through a sin. So, kung makasala ka sa ginoo, of course, na akay, punishment. Kinsay muhatag sa punishment no other than our God. Whatever we call him, the concept of divine law is that kung ang tao makasala, of course, ang mupanish ay yaha ang ginoo. Who dictates what is good and bad? Unsa ang sala? Of course, that is our Bible. What is now the sanction of divine law? The sanctions lie in the rewards and punishment in the present life or in the life to come. Sa ipasabot, so kung makasala ka, na kay sanction, na kay punishment. Kanus ani mo madawat ang punishment, wala takabalo, but it lie in the present life or in the life to come. Kung nakasala ka karon, wala man kay punishment karon samtang buhi pa ka, you will face your punishment when you die or in your next life. That is the divine law. Let us now go to the natural law. Natural law is the divine inspiration of man in the sense of justice fairness, and righteousness. This law believes that there are some acts or conduct which man knows in his heart and his conscience, not by theorizing, but by the dictates of his moral nature are simply good or bad or evil. There is in every man a basic understanding of right and wrong based on the fundamental standard of good and evil. Additionally, there are some acts Additionally, there are some acts which man knows in his heart and his conscience, not dictated by theory, but by his moral nature. Ang say pasabot ani, there is a natural law within every man, meaning tanang tao kabalo on say bad o on say good. So for example, kabalo man ta nga dili maayo ang pagpatay, kabalo po ta nga dili maayo ang pagpangawat. Naturally, tanang tao na kabalo on say maayo o on say dili. That is what we call the natural law. We know in our heart and we know in our conscience that a certain act is good or bad. Your natural law is the reasonable basis of state law. Say pasabot ani, natay state law because it is inspired by our natural law. Meaning, ang tao na ay kahibalo kung unsay tama o unsay mali. Let us now move on to moral law. The totality of the norms of good and right conduct growing out of the collective sense of right and wrong of every community is certainly the definition of moral law. There is no definite sanction, but unacceptable acts produce a spontaneous social reaction in the form of public displeasure or contempt. Lastly, it is not absolute and changes from time to time. Sa Bisaya pa, si moral law, mauni siya ang law nga giset sa society kung unsay tama o unsay mali. There is no exact punishment. For example, kabalota nga ang pagchismis mali. So kung nachismis ka, nga buntis ka, masking wala kagikasal, you violated the moral law. Kung nabuntis ka nga wapak kagikasal, kinsa man ang nag-ingon nga mali na the public itself. Mo ning kiingon na the totality of the norms of good and right conduct growing out of unsa daw collective sense of right and wrong. So ang society ang nag-ingon nga kung nabuntis ka nga dili ka kasal, sala na siya. Unsa man ang punishment? Kung nabuntis ka nga di ka kasal, walay exact punishment. Ang saying ingon, there is no definite sanction. Unsa man imong madawat. But an acceptable acts produce a spontaneous social reaction. Kana kay nabuntis man ka nga wak ka na minyo, ang imong punishment is ang chismis sa tibuok komunidad. That is moral law. Ang nagset sa moral law kay ang community itself. Let us now go to physical law. Physical law pertains to physical phenomena that we sense and feel, and it is a law of physical science being addressed to objects which have no power to disobey. Ang sama ning mga physical law ng atong ginahiskutan. Mo ni siya ang mga order or regularity in nature. 
For example, you cannot set a long, muingong ka nga, dapat ang ulan nun, ang bato-bato, radili ang banay-banay. That is physical law. You cannot control kung asa dapita ang muulan. You cannot order the sun to set at 3 p.m. because physical law na siya. In other words, physical law concerns itself with signs. Muni siyang mga panghitabo sa atong kinabuhi nga we cannot just set a certain law but what deals them are physical law or the laws of sciences. Now let us go to state law. Pag mangyatag state law, mauni siya atong mga ginahisgutan nga mga balaod. Kinsay naghimo aning state law, it is promulgated by the state. It is also called positive law, municipal law, civil law, or procedural law. The law of obligations and contracts, marriage, administration of justice, conduct of election, and the entire governmental processes are under state law. The only law enforced by the state is state law with the aid of its physical force. Ang say pasabot ani. Ang law nga pwede nato ipugos sa tao kay ang state law ragyod. O kini siya, unsaon pagpugos, pinaagi sa physical force. Maubitaw nga kung makasala ka, pwede ka dakpun by force. Kung musukol ka, ang police gihatagan o right para ikaw, pusilon. So when we talk about the laws and obligations and contract, it is under your state law. So state laws are obligatory rules on say pasabot tanang tao gina expect nga mo follow sa state law. Now let us go to the sources of law under state law. Asa man gika na atong mga balaod? First it comes from the constitution, then the legislative, the administrative or executive orders, regulations and rulings, judicial decisions or jurisprudence and custom. I discuss na to ni isa isa. So, for example, let us start with the Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land which all laws must conform. Pasabot, Ana, ang pinakahari sa tanang batas diri sa Tibuk Pilipinas, ang Constitution ang dapat sundun. Di ka pwede maghatag og balaod nga mo violate sa tuang Constitution. So, kung si Constitution may ingon nga, the family is an inviolable social institution. Ang pamilya, dili basta-basta pwede maguba. Mauna, kung magtiayon mo, kung ang imong asawa ng abit, ang kabit pwede ni mo kasuhan. Pero di lang ang kabit, pati ang imong asawa. Then we have the legislative, kung sa ato pang local government, mauni sila ang atong mga konsihal. Kung sa national government, mauni ang ato ang mga congressman o mga senators. Sila ang nagabuhat og balaod. But remember, ang mga balaod dapat mas conform o dapat mafollow sa constitution. Administrative or executive orders, mauni ang mga balaod nga ginapagawa sa mga lain-laing opisina sa gobyerno. So for example, kung ting election ang magpagawas o balaod kay ang Komelek. Kung pananglitan walay klase, magpagawas na si Mayor Og Executive Order. Monay, mga administrative or executive orders, regulations, and rulings. Unsa maning judicial decisions or jurisprudence, mauni siya ang mga kaso nga gidesidan sa Supreme Court sa Pilipinas. Kung muingon ang court nga ang pagpatay sa yup, pero kung ang nakapatay minor, kung muingon ang korte nga dili na pwede kulungon, that is what we call judicial decisions or jurisprudence. And then custom. Ano saan ang custom? Muni siya ang atong mga pinuhatan sukad pa sa una nga mahimo na siya acceptable sa mga tao. Custom takes a lot of time, pipila katuig bago siya mahimong acceptable sa mga tao. Example is the Sharia law. Naturally, dapat ang isa kapamilya, ang asawa ra og ang bana. But, because of customs, Muslim men are allowed to marry another provided that it is in accordance with the Sharia law. That is custom. Now, let us go to the hierarchy of courts. Kung say hierarchy, isearch nyo sa Google, mauni siya ang tamang order sa courts. So, magsugod ta sa pinakaubos, we have Metropolitan Trial Courts, Municipal Trial Courts, Municipal Circuit Trial Courts, and Sharia Courts. After ani nga mga court, moderate ta sa RTC kung mas taas-taas na nga mga krimen. And then kung napildi ka sa RTC, pwede ka mo apila sa 
Court of Appeals, then diretsyo sa Supreme Court. Ma'am, naalagisan di kang bayan, si sandigan bayan para ni sa mga government officials nga ilang sweldo na sa grade 27. Ang grade 27, I think, nasa mga 100 plus nga sweldo. So, kung ikaw si mayor, nakasala ka, diretsyo ang imong sala dito, i-file sa sandigang bayan. Ang sama ng Court of Tax Appeals, muni siya ang korte sa mga negosyante nga wala nagabayad o tarong nga tax. Dito ka mo file sa Court of Tax Appeals. Kung napildi ka ni Ana, diretso ka sa Supreme Court. Now, let us go to the different classification of laws. We have, as to purpose, natay substantive law and procedural law. What is substantive law? Muna siya ang nag define what a crime is and when it is considered wrong. So, for example, nangawat ka, kinsa man ang nag-ingon nga ang imong gibuhat pagpangawat. That is substantive law. Procedural law means how do you file a case in court. So, for example, nag-away mo sa imong silingan, kaya na siya'y utang sa imo, wala niya bayari. Of course, procedural law will tell us nga muuna o sa mo sa barangay bago mo mo file o kaso sa Korte. Now, let us go to subject matter. Public law and private law. Public law means ang imong gi-violate ang law sa publiko. For example, nangawat ka. Ang pagpangawat, gituring na siya nga public crime. Ang private law means mauni siya ang atong obligasyon o atong kontrata sa other party. Like si A nangutang kay B, ang kana ilahang subject matter is sa private law. However, always remember that if A fails to pay B, kung wala bayari ni A si B, pwede na nila dalon sa korte, karon wala na private law, nahimo na siyang public law.